Welcome everyone to episode, what is this, seven? Of the hottest new podcast in the land, the Lot C2 Podcast. Well, it's finally time to get down to business and talk about 90s muscle cars. Yes. Um, the rebirthening, the stronger continuation of the 80s rebirth of muscle. Oh yes. A decade in which, I don't know, I feel like we kind of look back on these cars and they're cool, but there's uh, a bit of a sense of mediocrity about them. Yeah. They weren't really as good as the 70s ones, but, you know, excuse me, you did have modern innovations, and it was definitely a step in the right direction, especially as you uh, turned into the new millennium. They had the character that everyone was looking for, that everybody needed from muscle cars. No more 180 horsepower V8s. Yes, 250 horsepower, baby. Okay, and with that, let's get it right into it. Um, well, are we going to do updates first? Yeah, so I have my, I think since last time, the back brakes whole thing. And you have your stuff. What's up with you? Yes. I can't remember if last time, I feel like last time I said my E30 tune was all done, and I feel like you said you had done your back brakes, you had fixed the squeak. I don't know. I can't remember for certain, but I feel like I remember us talking about that. I'm trying to think. It was two weeks ago. Yes. Mm. Well, regardless... Mike's back, Mike's back brakes. I almost said back brace. The back brace is done. probably going to need one of those in a few years too. Yeah, yeah. They're all done, and my E30 tune is now finalized and ripping. My brakes are not ripping anymore. No ripping brakes. Though I have to say, um, so I I took the E30 tune. Like, I, I just put it back on the 93 tune for ease of, you know, driving around. Yes, and up. It's kind of shocking, like, how much better fuel economy it gets, but also, like, the 93 tune feels slow compared to the E30. That's weird. That's interesting uh, with the fuel switch thing there. How much, how big of a difference if you would, like, what are the numbers? What's the data? Number-wise, I do not know. Damn it. But... It feels like it 100% does not pull as hard on 93 versus E30. Well, is it like a big enough gas difference? What is it? Is it offset it, you think? Is it worth? Are you, do you pay more or less with the, uh, you're paying less with E30, but is it like, do you think the fuel mileage, um, does it, does it even out or, uh, or what do you think? It, I think it evens out with the, uh, I think it evens out with the fuel economy, um, because with the E30 mix, I'm getting a solid two to three less miles per gallon at least. Right. Um, That's not huge, I guess. Well, yeah, you know, it's well, it's it's noticeable. Long highway It's driving, not it's like the yeah. hugest difference in the world, but it's definitely noticeable. But it's worth the power. It's just, you know, a pain to fill up, which makes sense. I don't even know if, um, is it all boost? Is it, does all boost like E85 or is it like primarily turbos and stuff? Is that a thing for my car? I don't know if that's a thing for my car. I think anything likes E85. I mean, it's higher octane, so it burns, you know. I know E85 burns cooler, and it burns faster. Right, okay. Oops, the octane. I'm trying to find, like, differences to see if anyone has a stock GT500 that just went E85. And for the gains. Yeah, E30 is, like, definitely much less fuel efficient, but, like, the power gain, just based on feeling. I mean, I spin third on E30... Well, you already have winter tires, I so time for the summer tires. Need stickier tires. It's kind of ridiculous. 
Well, the ones I have on that I run in the warmer weather are technically like a performance all season, but yeah, I 100% performance need to look into some summer stickier season. fronts. Like Pilot Sport but 4S. That's what I'm thinking. I just want to find some cheap 17-inch wheels. To put those on or for like, the Blizz Axe? What's that? To put on like your stickier tires or for the winter tires? I mean, I could. Just get them changed out every once in a while. Well, why do you want to get different wheels? Just to have the stickier tires on. But yeah, I guess it wouldn't be all that big of a deal to just swap the tires on and off. I guess you can do that, can't you? Well, you could, but I mean... How much does that cost? you got to compare... It's like, how many years can you swap them for it to be worth bu- not buying wheels? <laughs> right. Well, that's see, that's the thing. Because, like, I want to get stickier tires for the track only. Or, like, if I'm going to do something on the street, I don't want to get them for daily driving because they're going to wear out faster with the commute I have. Well, I mean, the Pilot Sport 4S is a street tire. That's what I have in my car. Yeah, but how many miles are they, you know, rated for? What's the tread wear? I think they're like 15,000 under normal driving conditions, so, you know, less But for us. But it's like a normal tire Yeah, rating. that's... I've put on more than that in less than a year of owning my car. I'm not buying new tires each year. Not if I don't have to, anyway. 30,000. Okay, 30,000. There you go. I don't know, man, because the ones I have now are rated for like sixty or seventy thousand miles. Balls. So, I think I'm at the point where I'd rather just get dedicated tires for the strip. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, if you're gonna do that, then you should get something like super sticky, like a the Nito NT five. Yeah, I'm thinking about like an NT five or something. Yeah. R. And just getting, like, some used, like, cheaper-ish wheels off of, like, Facebook or something. 10-inch hole shots. Yeah. I won't break an axle with those. You'll break everything. It'll be a whole adventure. Has anyone uh, so, RS swapped an ST? I mean... There's a whole, I don't think there's much of a point. There's a whole drive I, I don't know if they have, actually. Can you just swap in the engine and leave it front-wheel drive? Oh, man. That would literally be pointless. Yeah. yeah you just put... The 2.0 is a stronger block than the 2.3 anyway. Oh, well, there you go. Boost the piss out of it. Anyway, uh, so apart from that, I did an oil change this past weekend... And I installed my catch can, which uh, is a quote-unquote stage one catch can. They call it a stage one when it is on the PCV side of the crankcase system. So basically, like, you have to to pull off the uh, intake manifold because that's where the, uh, like, stock pcv port goes gotcha. and then uh what's that how long did that take intake valve i mean take manifold pcv valve. not very long there were a couple of sensors that were really stubborn uh but honestly that was probably the toughest part it's like five bolts or something that holds it onto the block wow yeah that's pretty nice it wasn't too bad at all um the trickiest part was Um, the trickiest part was be the hot side charge pipe. There's a boot that holds that charge pipe onto the throttle body. And it was just like, it was just a pain in the ass to get it off the throt, the throttle body and like move it away. And I didn't even get, I didn't even end up getting the charge pipe all the way off. I just kind of loosened the clamps and, uh, that was all I needed to do. Right. Did it? What kind of clip did it use? The charge pipe. Yeah, it was like a clip down, or how was it on there? Yeah, it was like a C clamp. Yeah, one of those bastards. 
Yeah. You just snap the tabs off. Getting my hands in there to loosen that thing. Yeah. Always a fun time, but no, I got it on. It was a little tight and, uh, you know, just weird. Plus, I have those stupid throttle body and intake manifold spacers on. I need to just take those things off and sell them. I don't even know why I still have those on there. Does it do anything? I really don't think so. People claim that it adds more power or whatever, but I, I'm i not confident in it. You gotta look up a, a dyno comparison. I'm sure there's one. I mean, it's a, it's a popular enough car. There's probably something on YouTube showing it's like a whole throttle body video or something. I know that a bigger throttle body does absolutely. Really? Oh, I guess that's true. Because your, you know, your air is coming from the turbo. That's right. For me, they they actually do do stuff because all my air is coming from the intake. But that, I guess unless that you sense. get, um, I feel like it doesn't do anything unless you either go big turbo or aux fuel. One of the two. Aux fuel. Which I would like to go someday, ox fuel. Yeah. Um, speaking of fuel, I think for me to run E85, I need like $1,300 fuel system. Well, see, that's the thing. If I wanted to run street, straight, street, if I wanted to run street E85, street E85. make it in my basement. Yeah. Uh, if I wanted to run straight E85, I would need to do more work to the car. I'd have to replace the fuel pump the high pressure fuel pump you know all that fun sort of stuff same yeah e30 is nice because you like reap some of the benefits of uh e85 but you don't have to do all that work to the car see that's i'm gonna have to look into that and see if that's a a thing for me because um because i have boost you do have boost. Maybe you would like the different food. <laughs> I'll have to look that up later. There's too much, too much, too many variables to pull on and out of that. Um, well, that sounds like it's fun. So you're on 93 now, and you're being convenient with it, which makes sense. Also, uh, funny story, unrelated to my car, so... Uh, since my brother crashed the Buick, and uh, he did, yeah, and my dad is looking into getting a new car. He was like, he's been tossing around the idea of giving his old car to my brother. So he wanted me to like come in and look it over, and like test it out, yeah, see what's going on, like if anything's going on. So, if it's shit, did that. What is it? What? What does he drive? It is a 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Ah, yes. Quite a fine specimen of automobile building. Mm hmm. So, check this out. So, I was driving it around, you know, everything's fine or whatever. And, uh,. I had to I had to get in another lane, so I gave it the beans to get over as you do. You know, I was fine. We turned the corner, uh go around, start driving straight. This is on Randall Road, I think. Yeah. Randall. We uh start doing that and uh I was going, going, going. All of a sudden, I notice that uh, the car's off. Like, it shut off. The fuck? Shut off? So, it shut off. Shut off. We were rolling, and the car shut off. It shut off. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, pressing the gas. I'm like, uh... Ow. So who was all in it we, there then? We turned the hazards on. Somehow I got over and we got into a parking lot. Thank God we had enough momentum. Uh, you know, brakes, steering, like all that stuff was still on. Everything was fine. Uh, we get it in there and like it's 
It was acting really, really weird. Um, you sure it's not a hybrid? I thought it was a math issue because something very similar happened with the Buick once upon a time. So we get it into this parking lot. I'm like trying to figure out what it is. You know, I'm turning it off and on. When it started out, it was idling really rough. Yeah. And like whenever you gave it gas, it would like rev up, but then it would die immediately afterward. Weird. So I thought it was the fuel pump. That's what I thought it was. Why? What made you think that? Because when you gave it gas, it would die. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. So, and eventually, like, the check engine light was on, but eventually, it started, like, running okay. We got the code read at AutoZone, and they said something like it was, uh... It was something going on with the throttle body. Like, it wasn't getting enough voltage or something like that. Okay. But I was like, Dad, you know, you need to take this to a shop. This code reader probably is not the most accurate and in-depth in the world. And, uh... But it was, it was like, running fine, even though the check engine light was on. So, it turns out, they, uh... He took it to this shop, and they replaced the entire throttle body. Huh, that's weird. I wonder if it was, so it was just dicked? I guess. There was something going on. According to the code that the AutoZone thing read, it wasn't getting the proper voltage or something like that. So I don't know if it was actually the entire throttle body or if it was just the sensor and it was cheaper to replace the throttle body. Uh, huh. I do not know. Well, how was it after that then? Apparently it's been fine. That is weird. How many miles did it have on it? Uh, 144,000. Maybe it was just time for it to uh, to take a shit. Well, it's a Hyundai, so... Yeah, and right around that era when they were, I guess, becoming acceptable in terms of reliability... Yeah, but, you know, my brother needs a car. Used car market is dicked right now. Nothing's cheap anymore. Sure is. So, I don't know. It'll be something that, you know, get him by, which was what the Buick was supposed to be for me, and then I had it for four years or whatever. A billion years after the Saturn. Huh. So, anyway. The glass pack Saturn. Yes, I do miss that car. Yeah, I think it was fun. Now on to the ST. So anyway, that was that. That was that. And, uh, yeah. All right. So nothing else newsworthy with your car besides you did the brakes a couple weeks ago? Nope, did the brakes, rotors and pads, and it's good. Carbon fiber Cease. rear pads, which is weird, but, you know, yeah do it once no i think last time actually i remember when i was editing that uh i was waiting on the rotors but i had the pads okay but yeah so i got the rotors and i did that whole thing and um it was fun because i needed the uh compression tool and it wouldn't work without it because i tried for <laughs> with the uh channel locks and the uh the needle nose method and they didn't work pain in the ass yeah those it's it's easier with those to just get the tool i think yeah so my buddy worked at the uh works at toyota dealership pretty close to here had the tool grabbed the tool and then had it done in like 15 minutes and yeah it's not bad when you get the tool no as long as the you know compressor actually or the caliper actually compresses yep and it compressed no problem and i had no issues with uh, my abs sensors or any of that so the back brakes are good and I've driven it a lot of miles, and they're good. I did the break in, and it made the weird smell. But after that, it was fine, and no issues. That's pretty normal, I think, especially with performance brakes. Yeah, yeah, it was a weird smell. Yeah, I haven't smelt smelt to that in a while. But yeah, so the brakes are done, 
And um, this weekend, we are going to the track. Maybe Friday. Maybe I'm going Friday. And you are working and being an adult. Um, but I don't know. After that, I may just like buy the intake and pulley and stuff just right away. Mm hmm. Because a baseline run is done, and I can have some fun with it. Uh, but we'll see. Well, I hope I can go. We'll see. The thing is, like, I don't have that traction bar on yet, and I really wanted to have the traction bar on when I go, because honestly, I think right now it's going to be pretty useless to try and drag race that thing. I mean... I mean, I don't know. It'll probably behave differently on a sticky surface than uh, than on the street. Yeah. But I still think it's going to be pretty useless from a launch. Well. I mean. I mean. Uh, yeah, you have to work Friday. so. Well, that's the other thing. I wouldn't be able to get there until, like, at earliest 530 probably. Right. And that's not too bad. How late are they open? What do they say? Like 10? 10, I think. I think that's what Mikus said. Yeah. I don't know, man. We'll see. Weekends just work so much better for me with that stuff. Yeah, I don't know why he uh, want, wants to go Friday. Maybe he got a new car. Well, you lucky bastards get to... Uh, you lucky bastards get to leave work early. Yeah, and the work from home thing also with anything that's We'll see, and here's the other thing is it's supposed to be like I mean, unless it's cooler there cuz it's closer to the lake, it's supposed to be like upper 80s on Friday. Uh I checked it was going to be 81, 10% chance of rain. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, but I'm probably still going to need to get ice for my the blower just heats up. Even though it's stock, right. but still, I don't know. So, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I need to get up to the track and just practice with it. Like, even if I don't have very good runs, I need to get some practice with it. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see. honestly, you could even then do a before and after with the traction bar, see how much it helps. That's true. But I do think I need to get serious about hunting for stickier tires as well. Yeah, well, yeah, probably the Nitos then, if you're doing race only. Probably that. That's what people... Those are the people who uh, tell you not to buy them for the street because they, well, have 5,000 miles of tread on them. Right. Yeah, you should come. It'll be so, fun. I know, man. Or I could just like, what bolt pattern do you have? Uh, 5 by 114. Ah. Uh. I think I have five by one oh eight. That's weird. I really haven't heard of any many other bolt I patterns think. than the normal like five by one fourteen. Maybe it's five by one fourteen. Hold on. That one is Let really me... common. It's gotta be that. I'm curious now. I feel like it's five by one oh eight, but I'm not I'm not positive. Oh wait, it is five by one oh eight. Well what the what is that? That's what I thought, yeah. Weird. Why, well, you want to try my 285s on your front? Well, dude, I was going to I was going to say, but I don't think they're going to fit. <laughs> no. I don't think so. That's weird. Hmm. That would be hilarious. Slap your Pilot Sports on the front, run a run a 11 second quarter mile. Yeah, right. Well, because my fronts are actually uh, two 255s, so those would probably fit. I mean, if they had the right bolt pattern. Right. I don't know. We'll see. It's something to keep in mind anyway. And I really do want to get that traction bar on. The only thing is, I've heard the... I mean, on paper, the install looks really easy. It's only a few bolts, but... I've heard that the bolts you have to undo are very tight. And you're supposed to have the suspension loaded when you put it on. So I would need either ramps or a lift. So it's not like just a frame brace. It's like actually in the suspension. Yes, you bolt it to the A-arms. 
Oh, yeah. We had a long talk about that last time. Um, yes. Yeah. No, those bolts look like they're not supposed to come out. <laughs> right. But I'm excited to get it on. I really do think it's going to help. We would be nice and, uh, if I had someone with a lift. Man, that's going to be the goal, I guess, eventually. Whenever I right. have a garage that's mine, get a, a lift. I mean, they're still expensive, but they're not, like, overly expensive. Like, two grand, and you can get a like a, a, a two-post, I think. A decent one. You just need, like, the roof space. That's the thing. It's, I mean, even if it doesn't. And it's nice for storage. I can get two Mustangs because they're sh- short. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll just take it. Maybe I'll just cave and take it to a shop and have them put it on or something. Cave burns, yeah. Cave burns. Thinking about. I don't know. A, we'll see. Just a daily. How cheap are uh, 4.0 Mustangs getting? Those are getting pretty cheap, aren't they? I have never looked once at the price of those. They got to be like four grand. Oh no, no, used cars are stupid. When it comes down, maybe I should try to get one of those. A shitty one just a five speed and beat the hell out of it as a daily you already had one of those i did blew the engine i did yeah that one <laughs> had 140 something thousand miles on it yeah that head gasket went and it just killed itself that was all fun. right i feel like with that we should probably skip news and spots of the week and get on to our topics Nine days. Because we're already 30 minutes in. Muscle cars. By the way, if I sounded spacey to anybody there for a few minutes, I was trying to win a record on auction. Duty calls. Yes, I'm also a little spacey. I had two donuts for lunch. (laughs) Go eat, bruh. No, it was okay. I had them a while ago. They were big donuts. (laughs) They were big donuts. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, '90s muscle cars. So, all right. What do we? All right. So, so we, there's like you know, where do we end up last time? I have no idea. We left off '93. I remember we talked about the Cobra '93 and yeah, the Cyclone and Typhoon, and I think that's kind of where we left it off. Sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. So. So let's just start right away with uh. With 94. Right. So 93, actually. 94, the SN95 Mustang came out, which was big. And also, I got to remember, in 93, the uh, fourth gen F body came out as well, which was also big. Yes. Because they were and, big competitors. And in addition to that, yes. Um, I think 94 was the first year for the first gen Lightning. I, uh, yeah, you know, I think so. Uh, ninety three actually. Okay, I was yeah, ninety three. Ninety three. Uh, so yeah, you had the new F bodies. You had the SN ninety five Mustang. A year later, you had uh the Lightning, and and <laughs> um, you had the big GMB body cars. Uh, and those started getting the uh, famous precursor to the LS, the LT1 engine. They did. That's right. Which uh, were in the early Camaros, the Z28. Yep, um, and the Corvette. And the Corvette. Was the first year SS an LT1? Um, The 93? Yeah. I think so. It was like only the, only the first year had the LT1, and they got the LS1, which made a lot of power. Um, it still makes a decent amount of power, like an original LS1. I'm guessing it is. It was a 5.7, so I'm guessing it was the LT1. Yeah, but they, they were all the 5.7. Gen. However, um, in the B-bodies... So basically, that was like the big V8 engine from General Motors at the time. You had the LT1 and the Camaro, the Trans Am, the Impala SS. Some of the Caprices had them, 
like the police package caprice uh yep. what else had an lt1 the buick roadmaster had an lt1 all yeah all of, any of those boats any boat any gm boat had the lt1 all of them which anyone who knows me knows i am a huge fan of those 90s lt1 b bodies and some of the older ones too but they're uh they're old tbi 350 and the 305 were not nearly as good as the lt1 yeah what was the lt one's uh issue didn't it have one big issue the opti spark opti spark was that one year only no i think all lt ones had the opti spark which could not tell you exactly how that system works uh but i think the issue is i don't know i don't want to you know sound like i'm ignorant or something but i think the issue with the opti spark was uh it would get messed up by the coolant somehow i don't know i better look it up before i sound like a total idiot no, it's even okay. more than I already do. Take your time. I'm still looking up when the SS came in. It looks like 96. Uh, when the what came in? When the SS came back from the dead. Yeah, because it was just the Z28 at first. Oh, okay. The high-performance variant in 1995 of the Z28 called the Z28 SS was not introduced until 1996 in collaboration with SLP Engineering. Also... So that would have 305 horsepower. Also, in 96, they made a... Uh, oh, what do they do? They made a, uh, a special edition called the... Oh, I just read it. It had an LT4 engine making 340 horsepower. 30th anniversary LT4 SS. Let's see. Let's see. 330 horsepower, 340 pound-feet. 100 cars were okay 106 okay yeah it's uh eight okay sorry it's good the big issue with the opti spark was indeed them getting wet because they are located conveniently under the water pump ah good yeah good design there those two mix very well okay well and they can be a very expensive job uh, I can imagine. Hmm. All right. So, so yeah, those were yeah. in the Firebird and the Camaro. And they um they had a power bump up because, you know, you can't have an Impala SS that's faster than the Corvette or the Camaro. I mean, come on. Yeah, so that got only 260 horsepower compared to the Camaro's 275 horsepower. Indeed. And the Corvettes, uh, three. Uh, I thought uh, that. Did it have 300? Two, 290? Two, somewhere around there? 285 or something? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, it was like it was like the last years of the C4. And really, that was kind of all GM had going on for most of the rest of the 90s until you get to 97 for the Corvette, 98 for. Uh, the F bodies and all of the B bodies were canceled in 96. RIP. Yes, they were. Um, Just makes the, uh, the, the, the Impala. The 96 is the special one, which had the dark the cherry. Floor shifter. Like the floor shifter. Yep. Dark cherry metallic. I think. I thought all the years had the dark cherry metallic. Maybe it was only the 96. I think that was only 96, which is why if you see like a black one, it's probably like a 94 or 5. Maybe, or I'm talking about another easy way you can tell is the 94s and 95s had column shifters and digital gauges, and the 96 had a floor shifter and analog gauges. Back to basics. Um, but 98 rolls around, like I said, 97 for the Corvette, and you have the unveiling of the mighty LS1. The LS1, which made as much power as the three valve Mustang, which was around until 2009. Yes. 
a little more in some cases. I think by the end of the LS ones, while the was like, 04 GTO had an LS one, and that made it was like 350 at the crank. Yeah, 350. So that was 350 so, in the GTO, and then uh, in the Camaro, I think it was up to either like 325 or 330 with the SLP package. 325, I believe. Okay, that's with the SLP package, and I think the Firebird, same thing, Trans Am. Pr- yes, WS6. Yep. But arguably, you know, I would say, I would say the most iconic modern V8. I mean, think about all the swaps you see with an LS. Yeah, or LS based motor, and a lot I of mean, it started like and like not even know. like that, but it's like all like movie stunt cars have like LS ones and stuff like that. Well, you know they're super cheap to build, super reliable. Yeah, put them in everything. You can get them out of a you know a truck for Christ's sake. An LS based motor. Is the LS one used in anything right now? Is it like any of the vans or anything anymore? No, I think the LS one has been discontinued for some time for is the ls3 even a thing because that's kind of what replaced it yes i think i think the ls3 is still a thing i don't know i can't keep up with all the technical names yeah because now they're on like the lt series and everything right back to the lt i should say we should say but anyway yeah these lts make a little bit more power than the 90s lt1 yeah just a little bit yeah 755 but really i think that's most of what i mean you know you get into the late 90s and you've got you know the ws6 trans am which uh still one of my dream cars is an o2 six speed ws6 yeah i do like those i don't know if i would take that they or are the, getting quite expensive the slp camaro are they yeah, I mean, it's hard to look at prices of used cars right now, especially. Um, right. But. Well, and it's interesting because those cars especially, like, and this is a great example of an era where you had these automatics that were four-speed, overdriven to hell, and then, you know, you had five-speeds and six-speeds, which were just oodles better. Right. And, you know... You could get off the line a lot better. And, and, like, sixth gear on those LS1 T56 cars is, like, I want to say at, like, 70 or 80, you're turning, like, 1,500 RPMs. Yeah, that is really nice. I wish mine was like that. Like, sixth gear is wildly overdriven. I wish mine was like that, too. Uh, yeah, I just wish my sixth was like super overdriven, but my one through five are the same. That's what they are now, I guess. Yep, that would be perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah. The T fifty six was in a lot of things as a transmission. A lot of oh, yes. a lot of different cars. Like a few more that we'll get to a little later. Yeah, you know, like the eventually the LS Camaros. I think always had the T fifty six and Firebirds. But yeah. But so let's let's keep talking about the nineties here right. for a while. So Dodge, you know the only thing really muscly that Dodge had throughout the nineties, I would say, is probably the Viper. Yeah. Especially the early Viper was more like a muscle car. That was more like a the Shelby Cobra kind of thing. The old school. Well and think about it. You had power nothing. And dead everything. Yeah, no 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 driver's assistance whatsoever. Yeah, if you hit something you were gonna die. Um, I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine car manufacturers even trying to market a car like that anymore? Yeah, it would have to be like one of a kit car, like a caterham or something like that. You go you wouldn't be able to sell that like as a normal car. But it'd be nice if the Viper came back, but that's a whole different thing. Right. I don't know. Who knows? But, you know, that big old 8.4 liter V10. It's not really doing any favors to itself there now, is it? (laughs) Little man. (laughs) Yeah. 
Well, okay, and there's Dodge, and then Ford had, of course, the Mustang. They also had other things, like the Thunderbird and weird stuff like that. Ah, yes, how can we forget the Thunderbird? Yeah. Now, is this the era of the supercharged V6 Thunderbird? I think it might be. Eventually it moved to a 3.9, I think. Let's take a look here. But they did have the, yeah, the V6 was around for quite a while, actually. Um, let see, it was the ninth, tenth, tenth generation Thunderbird. All right. So, at various points, from 89 to 97, it had the, let's see. Oh, my God. It had so many different engine choices. So, it had a NA V6, supercharged V6, uh, the 5.0 aka the 4.9 and then the 4.6 <laughs> it was actually i believe the thunderbird was the first car to get the brand new modular overhead cam 4.6 really it wasn't the crown vic or anything it might have been the same year both 94 i think the redesigned crown vic came out or something around that time and i believe it got that but yeah uh i would say that ford probably had the most like sleeper e of the muscle cars back then. Right. Well, you know, it wasn't, was GM doing any turbo V6 stuff really besides the uh, GMC in the nineties so mm. much? Or no, was that more I like mean, the late 80s? you had supercharged V6, like the Buick Riviera. And then all of the, all of the, uh, supercharged 3800 cars that started coming around in the late 90s the park avenue ultra the regal gs uh you know the bonneville ssei gm had a whole slew of cars with the 3800 supercharged which i also particularly love yeah that is a cool engine because it's like a normal a normal engine but uh and i mean you know the blower are they muscle cars i would say hardly but they're quick yeah and they can be built even quicker because the blower you just do a pulley swap i want to say those had eaten blowers on them yeah i think they had the same ones that were on the cobra actually i think maybe tiny little one but you know they're front wheel drive so they suck right mike eh <laughs> Most that'll be that'll be a topic for our uh, debate episode. But if you bought the Thunderbird Super Coupe, you could get it with a five-speed. Apparently, it was the only yeah. Thunderbird to be had with the manual. And those were rear-wheel drive. Yes, they were. The um, last also gen? Mercury had a nope, I'm an idiot. some sort of Cougar that you could get with a five-zero, I believe. Yeah, I forgot about the Cougar. The, uh, oh, jeez. I knew a kid in high school that had one of those 90s V8 Cougars. They look kind of cool. I don't, I don't mind them. I mean, it's basically the Mercury version of the Thunderbird. It is, yeah, they look very, yeah. They had, um, let's see. Yeah, they had the 5.0, and then for 90, in 94, they got the 4.6. It looks like it. And uh, 89 and 90, there was a five-speed option. Yeah. Okay. And, of course, on the Lincoln side of things, you know, you get into the later 90s and you have the mighty Lincoln Mark 8. Oh, my God. Yeah. That had to be the 4.6 also. Or the 5.0 was a, It was a four-valve. It was a Cobra motor. That's right. I forgot about that. That was like the... Uh, Man, that reminds me a lot of the. Uh, I think the they started putting the four valve four sixes in those in the nineties. I might be jumping ahead a little bit. Um, I feel like ninety eight was the first year they started doing that. Oh yeah, they had the in ninety seven maybe. Um. Let's see. I'm not sure. I'm looking at the. Uh, so I mean, cool. there were for, for people that are looking to like get like a budget muscle ish type of car. One of these like sleeper ish cars from the 90s that came with these V8s. I mean, 
the Lincoln Mark A from that era has basically the same engine as the Mercury Marauder, and you know it's a naturally aspirated version of what would end up being in the Terminator Cobra, yep. which we'll talk about shortly. That that engine was also eventually heavily modified, used in Koenigsegg CC8S, and then the CCR, the one that was dual supercharged. So there you go. Buy a Lincoln Mark 8, and you'll basically have a Koenigsegg. Yes, like V6 Mustang is GTR. <laughs> same, same <laughs> thing with uh. Damn it. Same thing with uh the Chevys, uh you know with the LT1 and whatnot. I mean, you can get an LT1 Caprice for pretty cheap. Yeah, you really can. Um. Not Even anymore. if it's total like grandma mobile, you know, shell out a few grand and you can have yourself yeah, like a decently nice LT1 Caprice. And you can take the exhaust off as you do and uh, beat the piss out of it. But what you don't want to do is take a cop car engine and swap it into your Mustang. Which has a spun bearing, the, the new engine. Because, you know... Whoops. That just opens the door to a whole world of problems. Yeah, you should probably take one out of another Mustang. That was a whole thing that happened. Our buddy yes, bought a Mustang. Uh, the engine went. He bought a cop car, Crown Vic 2 valve 4.6, swapped it in, and it spun a bearing. That car couldn't have been on the road for, what, more than five months? Yeah, not a while, but enough that I remember cruising uh, with him and then with our other buddy Cody. Yes. We all had Mustangs. The yellow new edge. Yep, and then I had the three valve. I was fancy. I think our neighbor just started his uh, Scat Pack Challenger and the idle is definitely bleeding through into my mic. Huh. I don't hear it on the uh, the call here, but We'll see. It's a little authenticity we'll of of horsepower. Of course. Huh. Is there anything else we need to cover from the 90s? I mean, you had the first gen Lightning. Yeah, the first gen Lightning. I mean, we can Which that used the 5.8 that was in the Cobra R and I think it made 240 horsepower, but like 300 some Did odd foot pounds the 5.8? Yeah, I think the first gen did. It says uh, 250 horsepower, 351. So, yeah, yeah I guess that would have been the 5.8. Yeah, 5.8 Windsor, uh, 240, three, 340. It made more torque than the Cobra. Yeah, it was bumped up in, uh, or no, it was the the supercharged ones that really got the kick in the ass which technically did come i think 99 was the first year of those yeah the redesigned but the first lightnings were uh naturally aspirated i think they came in auto only i know um, the supercharged ones did for the lightning i think it did i can't now this is a uh the Ford automatic was the only available trans. Aluminum drive shaft had 410 gears, limited slip diff. Um, had shocks, not leaf springs, I guess. Uh, thicker frame rails. Let's see. 120 mile an hour speedo. Bucket sheets. Wow. Also, it looks like there are more black first-gen Lightnings built than red ones. That doesn't surprise me. How many white ones were built? Uh, a little over 2,000. 20, let's see, like 2,200 or so. There's a person near where I live. I don't know if he still has both of them or any of them, but he used to have two white first-gen Lightnings that literally just sat. That sucks. Like, in bad condition. 
Um, I mean, I would hardly call them pristine. They didn't look like shit boxes, but they didn't look great either. That sucks. They came with shorties from the factory. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Now, I honestly, I think those look way better than the second gen lightnings. Yeah, I kind of like them too. I like the boxier, the sleeker, the flying yeah. brick. Yeah, I think they're almost kind of, I mean, you know, it's pretty easy to see why they were overshadowed by the second gen, but I, I feel like they're kind of forgotten by this point. Yeah, so do I. I mean, you can have them for cheap, too. They're not too expensive. Right. They also made a shitload more second-gen lightnings. Oh, yeah. Big time. Well, they were also made for longer. Right. And speaking of second-gen lightnings, Mike, you want to give us a recap about, uh, you know... Some fantastic upgrades that the second gen lightning received. I will. I will do that. They do hit close to home here. <laughs> so That's true. The lightning, which a uh let's see. The F F series was rebirthed, reborn in some year, ninety seven or so. Ninety nine? Was it ninety nine? Was it the first year? The first year of the Lightning was nine. Was the second gen was ninety nine. Yes. Okay. So the tenth gen Ford F series came out in for the ninety seven model year, and then by ninety nine they got the Lightning finally, which was oh so nice. Um, featuring a five point four liter, it was a two valve actually. No shit. Used a two valve Triton supercharged intercooled V eight Triton supercharged. It was a 5.4 Triton, and then it used a Eaton blower, I believe. Yep, Eaton M112, so the same one that was on the Cobras. So, um, which made about 360 horsepower, 440 foot-pounds in 99 and 2000, which was then bumped up to 380, 450 for the remainder of its production life until 2004, over which 28,000 were produced. Now, and those are big numbers for back then. They are, especially for a performance-oriented pickup truck, which is kind of interesting, actually, because that's not a thing that really came back around until like now. Well, I guess I mean, that was recently, with, like the Raptor that, and stuff. Right, yeah, that PRX. that would have easily been the fastest performance truck back in the day. Right, but we also actually we also have to remember the uh, that Ram SRT10. Well, but that didn't come out until a few years later. Yeah, it was like, yes, it's true. Um, so this one is important here because uh, the 03 Cobra was supposed to be NA, and they kept having issues with something. I don't know if they couldn't get their desired power level or what, but they looked at the Lightning, and which used uh, forged rods, I believe. So they... Uh, we're like, oh, let's just throw a blower on it. And they made the 4.6 four valve mod motor supercharged edition as opposed Which, to the regular boring NA edition. As long as we're there, we might as well talk about, honestly, I think the best muscle car of this era. The 90s era, the Terminator Cobra. The Terminator Cobra. Yeah is the most powerful of them of them all besides you know weird one-offs um more powerful than the corvette of the day pretty close ish to the viper rated horsepower oh, i mean they, and they made let's see so in 1999 actually let's talk about that it's interesting the Cobra was rated at 300 horsepower and people were dynoing their stock ones and they were getting less power it turns out Ford used the wrong exhaust on them, so um, I didn't time, know that. Yeah, so they so they were all recalled, and then Ford put the uh, correct exhaust on them. So by the time the Terminator came out, they underrated the horsepower. So it's rated three ninety, three ninety, I believe. Uh, but it's, they seem to be making a bit more, like into the low four hundreds, according to various dyno runs when corrected. I say corrected. 
which is interesting. But yeah, Terminators are no joke. Those engines can handle upwards of high 600s, probably around 700 horsepower before anything goes wrong. Forged internals from the factory? Yep, manly rods forged. And those things are, uh, yeah. I did want and one for a while. A while. I still want one. I would love to own one. That would be fun. I should get a Terminator as a daily. <laughs> they sound amazing. Honestly, I think they look really cool. I would love to own a Mr. Chrome hardtop Terminator. Yes, hardtop only, which is a thing because there's a lot of convertibles. Mo- like, there are. And they yeah. are quite a bit more affordable than the hardtops, using that yeah. term relatively, of course. Right. Also, yeah, like the colors. He said Mystachrome can bring 5 to 10 grand more. Comp Orange can bring 5 grand more. I don't even see Comp Orange Cobras for sale anymore, actually. Those like, are ever. rare. I see more Mystachrome for sale than Comp Orange. I follow you- someone on Instagram who has a Comp Orange Cobra, and they've had it for like, I don't even know, five or six years. So they bought it when it was like cheap, cheap. Yeah, they're, they're, I would say they're going up into, you know, as, as cool as they are, I kind of don't think they're worth what people are paying for them. Well, like 25? More than that. It's like 25 on the low end now. Oh, you can still find, you can still find them for like 22 for like 100 or 90,000 miles. 110,000 miles a high mile cobra it's not too bad but they were like below 20 for a while that's the thing i personally do not think they're worth that kind of money i feel like if i had that kind of money to spend i'd rather put it towards something newer that newer than a mustang on the fox but i mean right i mean you could build something that would kill a terminator but uh those Terminators are, I mean, they're they are not super heavy, but they are a shining example of a fast car that has, like, one of the worst interiors ever. Oh, yeah, New Edge Mustang interiors are horrible. That's, like, one of the main reasons I didn't want one over the GT500. Also, like you said, prices were coming up, and i paying that much for a New Edge Mustang. I don't know. Yeah, I know they're getting, all I those. Mean, horrible. Makes you want to throw up. All those 90s car interiors are not... I mean, some, like the Impala SS is super comfortable, but like your Camaros and Trans Ams and whatnot, the interiors are just not great. You know, very plasticky, very cheap. Just, but it's just gray plastic, yeah, everywhere. You, you weren't really buying those cars for the interior. You were buying them to floor the shit out of it everywhere you go. Yes. Precisely. Yeah, Terminator I mean, I guess Cobra. It's... What? Terminator Cobra. I was to say also the uh, only the first Mustang to have a independent rear suspension until and then yes. and then the entire fifth gen never had one until the sixth gen came out. So the fourth gen Mustang had an IRS. The fifth gen did not, and then finally sixth gen it was standard. And the other big claim to fame from the Termi. The IRS. And that it killed the Camaro, which which was already dead, but you know. Right. It's fun to think. But I mean, as long as we're talking about Fords, I guess. uh, Yeah. uh, One of the two new edges that I would own. The other being the Mach 1. Yeah, Mach 1. It had the non-supercharged four valve, but it also had the shaker hood scoop which makes any car cooler automatically by default. Yes. Jordan took me a ride, took me for a ride in his sister's Mach 1, that super low mile one. Yeah. It's pretty quick. I think he said he broke that thing. (laughs) Yeah, I think he did. Leave it to Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They, uh, those engines are interesting. Apparently they don't respond too well to mods i guess i don't really? know really i think like boltons they don't like boltons they'll take boost but they don't like boltons a whole lot 
doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't know. That's the same... Is that the same engine? I mean, minus the shaker, obviously, that's in the Marauder? Yeah, same engine. I love Marauders. Yeah, a guy down the street for me has one, and it is nice. Yeah, I do like those Marauders. How much Marauders? That would be a good daily. Yes. Those prices have been going up too, though. Let's see how much. Wow, 228,000 miles for seven grand. Yikes. Motor knocking, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a Subaru ad. Yeah. There's one with uh, 66,000 miles for 23,000. Holy cow. Man, yep, I guess those are too expensive now. Oh, well. <laughs> That's like uh, Subaru ads. At 250,000 miles on the body, third gear's gone, new engine is knocking, eh, $6,000. <laughs> new engine is knocking. <laughs> Blew a head gasket, axles are leaking. Comes with Cobb Assess Port. <laughs> we'll and a straight it. pipe with a four inch fart can out the back but of course only that um but yeah what else is there there's the cobra r's which are cool oh yeah and the uh what am i no they had the they had the cobra r of the 90s and then the uh there's 93 95 and then 2000 that 2000 was uh that was a 5.4 liter supercharged, right? Or was it a 5.8? That one, I believe, used an NA 5.4. I thought made... that was supercharged for some reason. No, it was NA. A lot of people did put blowers on them when they bought them. Um, but yeah, that was NA. It made 385 horsepower, so just five less than the Terminator had claimed horsepower numbers, which is surprising. And those so... cars are expensive. Yeah, actually, I wonder how much they are now. I remember I saw one for sale. So they were sixty grand, brand new, and then they kind of just never fell. They didn't go up much because I remember there was one actually for sale in my town for sixty grand. It had like two thousand miles on it or so, but um, which is interesting because that's what it was new. So I mean, I guess it's not terrible if you want to. I mean, I guess it's worth less technically because of inflation. Right. Um, well, let's see. It looks like I can find there's uh, they're selling for about let's see fifty grand up until well, one sold on Bring a Trailer a few weeks ago for ninety eight grand. How much? Yeah, geez, talk about paying a lot for a new edge. Let's see. 41,000, one of them sold. At Meekum. Man. Those always go for big money at auctions like that. Yeah, 41, that's not bad at all. 10,000 miles on it, too. Actually, that's not terrible. Like, you're gonna you're going in to buy, like, a fully loaded, uh, like, a 2020 GT, and you're like, eh, or I can get... a. 2000 Cobra R. They built 300 of them. But then you I'd never... rather have the Cobra R. Yeah, but then you'd need to buy a daily. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you, you're not going to be driving the Cobra R everywhere. I mean, you no. could, but only if you're going to keep it forever. I dig the side pipes on those. Yeah, factory side pipes because they had an enlarged fuel tank. Just like the second gen Lightning. Yes, the Lightning had the side pips. Was that the reason why, also? I don't know. I was just thinking about that. Maybe just because it looked cool. Because it did look cool. It did look cool. Um, what else had side pipes? The Vipa, the C2 Corvette. The C3 Corvette. C3 Corvette. The AAR Cuda and the TA Challenger. Boss 302. Quite a bit of stuff had side pipes. 
some school buses. <laughs> technically, I mean, I guess it, ex- <laughs> it exits ahead of the back wheel. There we go. So I think uh, I think that kind of wraps it up for Chevy and Ford. Well, you did have the HHR SS. I think those came out in 03. Yes. Is that which LS had the LS1 or 3? Yep. LS1. LS1. And I've always hated those cars. I just can't stand how they look. Yeah. Um, better than the PT Cruiser, but still ugly. Oh, are you thinking of the SSR? Yes, I'm sorry. I said the HHR, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I meant the SSR. The SSR. Yes, that's the one. The truck. If you could call it that. Yeah, I went to, uh, we were in Florida on vacation a few years ago. And uh, we went to a car show and enrolled like 12 of these things. I think I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, most I've ever seen, ever in one place. Also, um, so that's weird. So from 2003 to four, it used an LM4 V8. It was a 5.3. And then in 05 to 06, it had an LS2. Hmm, just like the GTO. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. What the Interesting. Hell Did not know it used a 5.3. I thought it used a 5.7. Yeah, so did I. It's weird. Um, I can't really find much. Uh, OLMF. I mean, who cares? The H, the SSR sucks. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of nuts. I've just never, I mean, you know, cool that it had a V8 or whatever, but I've just never been able to get into them. Yeah, I, I hate. Yeah, either have I. Forty-two grand, brand new, and you know oh some of them. God. You know some of them were marked up too. So in two thousand three dollars, they cost forty-two grand. Sure did. Oh my god. PT cruisers were like over twenty. Imagine that. <laughs> I can't imagine paying over two for one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we should get. Uh, a PT Cruiser GT and just oh god that's Cut even embarrassing off. yeah I was gonna say yes but that's even like even still even though it's like a dick around car it's like still embarrassing to be seen in nah it'd be fun it would be fun as long as it's a, f- a five speed which are honestly I feel like those are kind of hard to find maybe not so much with the GT maybe it'll yeah, I don't know I don't know, man, but. Well, let's finish. uh, I think we've kind of covered all the Ford from that era until 2004. Uh, We'll finish off GM and then we'll get on to Dodge. A couple other important GM cars came out for 2004. Talking, of course, about the revived GTO, a.k.a. V. Holden Monaro. Yep. And the Cadillac CTS-V. Yes, the first gen NA manual only CTSV. That's right. I believe people... those came with a. I think that came with the LS6. No, it was the LS2. I thought it was uh, the LS6. Let's see here. CTSV came with a. Uh, Oh, jeez. What was it? Hold on. Hold on. Reading the whole Wikipedia thing here. I thought it was an LS6 for some reason, but my little handy-dandy guidebook is saying that it's an LS2, which would have been in the Corvette at the time. Wikipedia says LS6. See, that's what I thought. I thought it was an LS6 because I thought it had a different intake. Yeah, 400 horsepower, 395 torque. Um, 
but in a heavy Cadillac CTS, I've heard the rear ends are quite fragile on those cars, which is weird because I think they have the same rear end as the GTO, and I've never heard a ton of bad things about the rear end in the GTO, so I don't know. They're probably close to the same weight, too, actually. I mean, Yeah, CTS, those GTOs are heavy. Yeah, CTS isn't... I mean, it's like 3,600 pounds. That's, I think, the regular, regular yeah, base model. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. Yeah. Is it 0 to 60 at 4.6? Not bad. Quarter mile, 13, 1 at 109. Not bad at all. Especially for back then. Right. I mean, stuff was starting to get a little faster at this point, but still it's not too uh, bad okay. yeah, i mean right if you're stuck on getting a manual ctsv your odds are going to be much better here because the first gen was manual only right like see that's the issue i mean if you want a manual one with a blower i guess the second gen is going to be your best because there's probably the most manual sold of that i don't think they even made a manual third gen ctsv uh, the second gen, the uh, yeah, the O nine, O nine to thirteen or whatever, or O nine to fifteen or whatever it was. Yeah, there's a manual. I know there was. That was the Here's... second gen, though. Well, weren't those supercharged, or were those not either? I yeah, they were. I'm saying like, because you said if you want a manual one with a blower, that's going to be your best bet. But I think it would be your only bet. No, I so said if you want a manual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Did the third one? I thought the third one. I don't think the third gen, the 2016. Oh, no. The, the six speed is an auto. Yes. Yeah. Thought, thought it had a 60 60 still. Nope. I think those came with an auto only. They sure did. Ain't that nuts. I've noticed that. Uh, the ATSV had a manual. That's the one. Really? That I did not know. It did for at least a few years. The ones in Forza are manual, actually. Huh. Never paid that much attention, I guess. E. But it's pretty... It's pretty hard to find the supercharged ones with a manual. I can imagine it is. The wagons especially. The, I, I, think, the, I think the coupe is the one I've seen the most that comes up for sale with a manual. Yeah, I mean the manual very few wagon. wagons, and I've actually seen even fewer sedans with a manual. Right, but we're bleeding over into a. Uh, yes, we need to. The future. Put it to rest there. Two thousand four. That's our cutoff point. That's when the CTSV was introduced to the world, and I've kind of always had a soft spot for those first gen CTSVs. I like them because they're like kind of subtle. Like, except the only thing is they have the grill in the front. That's like that's how the main way to tell them apart. Yeah, and the wheels and the badges. Right, and the V badge, yeah. Um, and the Huis. Yes. Uh, and they are eons cheaper than the ones with the blowers. Yes, they are. You can find them for 15 grand or less all day. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, In fact, it was... Uh, my first street race that I saw, one of the cars was a first-gen CTSV, and it was loud as balls, and I was like, what in the hell kind of Cadillac is this? And then it sent it. I mean, it sounded, you know, it sounded like a Corvette. I was like, what kind of Cadillac is that? And then I saw the V badge, and I actually thought that it was like a Roman numeral. I thought it was called a CTS-5. Right, which is now even more confusing because there's a CT5 and stuff. Right. Well, that... So I'm walking around school and I'm like, I saw this Cadillac thing. It was a CTS5 and someone's like, no, it's it's a V. It's not, it's not a 5. It's just a letter V. And I was like, oh. And then you were enlightened. And now yes. you know you know with what the V is. It was racing a C6. It was these two people... Like, literally one of the busiest roads around my area. This light turns green. They inch up a little bit. 
And I don't even know if they honked or anything, but they just went, like, from a dig. That's the way to do it, baby. And uh, I want to say I saw them race twice, and I think the Cadillac got the Corvette the first time. Yeah. It's, yeah. It was oh, sick. It was it, is it sick. was really cool. Those are the things as kids that open up a whole new world. Yeah, as it was like it was like a game changer for me. Especially when you're getting of driving age and stuff like that. Yeah, I want to say I was I had probably just turned 18 when this happened. Like yeah. turned 18 a few months before this. Pants were shat, minds were opened. And oh my in- god, I was in awe. I mean, just the way the Cadillac sounded. Right. Yeah, I don't even know the first time I saw a V. Yeah, I don't know. But they're cool. Um, also in 2004, the GTO. The Holden Monaro. The Monaro. Yeah. So we the, got that uh, as a two-door. Yes. Plus one. Straight a, uh, out of uh, 1998. Australia. The LS1's final most powerful iteration. 350 horsepower. I think 350 torque. Maybe 325 or so. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Which are by far the cheapest GTO you can get. And kind of the one that no one wants. No offense, Nick. I know you were a former LS1 GTO owner. Yeah, because if you want one, you get the 05 and 06, which had the LS2, which makes 400 horsepower. There's more potential in building them. Um, but then also I mean, it's the, not to say the... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say also then the other thing with the GTO is you, if you're getting an auto, it's a four-speed auto, which like we talked about earlier. It's kind of a dog. But the manual, yep. you get the T56, six-speed. In Ds. And you could send your happy ass down the track a lot faster <laughs> if you have, you know, two extra ratios to work with. Well, and I mean, it's not like the LS1 is a bad engine. It's just, you know, not as good as the LS2, I think, my opinion. Right. You know, say at that point it was kind of old, but the Coyote right now is as old as the LS1 was then. So, yeah. Is it really? Yeah, oh my Coyote, God, it is. ten years old, but it's also Gen three, and they've been like confidently upping the power and calling it new generations. I mean, the new Coyote has a different block, so it's, it's even older than the LS would have been when the GTO was released. Oh yeah, by a decent amount, actually. The math. Oh, but, yeah. that makes me feel old. Yep, the Yodi is old. Again, getting ahead of ourselves here. Yes. Um. Are you sure the Ram SRT 10? I was think later? that. I think the mm-hmm. debut for that was either 03 or 04. Dodge Ram SRT 10. 04. So I guess it fits. Yes. A Viper truck. What's not to love? With a six speed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right, yeah. If you Did it only it. come six speed at first? I don't know. I don't know if it was. If they had the four-speed option the entire... I think it had the option the entire time. Hold on. Let's take a gander here. Um, so it's zero to 16 under five seconds. Rated at 500 horse, 525 torque. So ending the second-gen Lightning's reign is the most powerful performance truck. The engine made 90% of its torque from 1,500 to 5,600 RPM. That is wow. insane. All right. See, the regular cab, which was a lot faster, featured a Tremec T56, and the quad cab had the four-speed auto. That so, makes sense. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, you could actually you get it in a quad cab or single cab if you wanted. But um, There's a guy at the Mopar show in Belvedere. I think he's one of the guys that works at like the front ticket thing. Yeah. He's got a Ram SRT 10 with a six speed that he parks out in front of the gate. It's like this 
super old dude who talks about how fast it is and how easy it is to do burnouts and stuff. Sounds like a fun guy. A fun guy. Yes. Yeah, you know, I don't see a lot of those. I actually, I used to always see the uh, power wagons or whatever the hell they were called, the Super B. What the hell were those things called? Oh, they uh, I think they were called a Rumble B, yeah. I always would see those and think I saw I was seeing an SRT10, but I haven't even seen I, those for a while. I haven't seen an actual SRT10. I don't think 10. the Rumble Bs are all that special. No, but I always feel like the front end. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like the little 10. graphic they have too. But yeah, the SRT10s are sick. Um, they have, oh yeah, their wheels are really cool because they're made to look like Viper wheels. They're just way bigger. Forgot about yeah. that. 22s. They're like 305s or something. They're gigantic, yeah. But I mean, I guess you need it if you got all that power, nothing in the back to weigh it down. All that torque and power, yeah. Yeah, those trucks are super cool. I see them every now, you know, Belvedere's big Mopar town, so I see them around every now and then. And someone in Belvedere used to own one of those Rumblebees, too, which I don't know a ton about. I feel like the Rumblebee was just an appearance package. Probably. I mean, most of that stuff was. Looks like they built about a... Could be wrong. We can look that one up. It looks like they made about 10,000 SRT10 Rams total. I see them around every now and then. I wouldn't call them common by any means, but I do see them around from time to time. It's always a treat. I can't remember the last time I saw one, actually. Aluminum block. Okay, that makes sense, because otherwise it would be heavy as balls. Like my cock. Now, while Mike's looking that up about the Rumblebees, I'll go on to say it's interesting with Dodge, because, I mean, apart from the Raptor, the Ram SRT-10, you really did not have Dodge doing very much in the way of muscle during this time. Uh, I mean, the closest things you had, I guess, would be the Stealth RT, all-wheel drive, twin-turbo V6, some of them. Not all of them. Some of them were just front-wheel drive, naturally aspirated. Right, which was the Mitsubishi. Yep, the 3000 GT. Yep, the VR4 was the Similar big one. Similar to how uh, the Conquest was the same thing as the, the Starion. Uh, huh? Yeah. All right, well, it looks like the Rumblebee came out the same year, actually. Um, yeah, I don't think it was anything. It has the regular Hemi making the regular horsepower. Well... Still a cool appearance package. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, you know. the other thing that Dodge did that was really the only other thing they were doing in the muscle car vein at the time, besides having the mighty PT Cruiser GT, they had yeah. the almighty Neon SRT4. Oh, yes. Is that the, the original SRT vehicle actually yeah it was i guess the very first in 04 SRT. or was the srt 10 viper before that no Ooh. uh it might have been actually like 03 actually maybe well the the neon came out in 03 who was the winner of the srt 10 race let's see oh my god Wikipedia page. Oh my <laughs> Jesus. Okay. No, not that one. Okay. Wait. Okay. SRT 10 Roadster in 2003. Okay. So they were tied. Same year. Yeah. Now, I think the Neon SRT 4 is basically, you know, we talked in the 80s episode about all the turbo Chrysler vehicles. This is just another example of that, except on crack. Yeah, it was um, one of the fastest front-wheel drive cars. Well, I think when it came out, it was the fastest front-wheel drive car ever made, right? Or something yep. like that. And you could get them 
really cheap too. I want to say the MSRP was under twenty grand. They were, yeah, it was really cheap. Um, go g- give give a little brief history of the SRT and the colors and such. I know you know all that stuff. Well, since we're only going, well, we're gonna have to cheat a little bit here. We might as well because the last year the SRT four was O five. Yeah. Now, the again the O fours and O fives. You know, the first year is not the one you want because the first year does not have a limited slip differential. But the O4s and the O5s do have a limited slip differential. It limits your slip. And uh, the O4s and O5s made more power. I want to say they had bigger injectors and maybe a couple of other things. I'm not... You could get into a whole thing about the SRT4s. Chrysler offered, like, stage packages for them from the factory that you could get a whole slew of things to upgrade them with it's actually pretty cool yeah can't you get power over 300 from like the stage stage tunes it was like 240 stock um they yeah they were rated at i think the 04s and 05s were rated at 230 stock but that was underrated i mean you know everyone loves to shit on them because they're front wheel drive which at the end of the day how much power are you going to put down with a front-wheel drive? But from a roll, you know, once you get past the launch stage, they're pretty damn fast. Yeah, for they are. what they are. I mean, they weigh nothing. You can make power on them pretty easily. I would love to own an SRT4. I think it would be a super fun piss-around car. The only problem is, nowadays, and I think we actually mentioned this in our first podcast episode because we were talking about like how expensive the real low mileage stock srt fours are yeah and it's like if you go on to facebook marketplace and you're just looking at an srt4 you know it's gonna be rusty or beat to shit or both you know third gear might be gone on it because third gear loves to loves to go on those cars yeah it does that is a problem with them i drove one and it was like overheating (laughs) and that was it yes you drove that after you crashed your first gt i think right yeah i was looking at something to replace it so i drove a neon and it was overheating so i couldn't floor it so it was kind of pointless how much boost did you get it up to Man, I don't even know. 12, 15, I don't oh, know how much he was even running. So you really didn't even get to feel it. No, not really. But, but yeah, I don't know. They started at 20 grand, like exactly 20 pretty much. And it's interesting because like Dodge knew the type of people that were going to be buying that car. They were starting to like, you know, Because this was around the time that Fast and Furious was big. Like, the whole tuner thing was taken off. Like, Dodge knew the audience they were selling to. Yeah, so much so. They tried to get Brian to drive an SRT4 in the opening scene of Too Fast, Too Furious. Indeed. And we all know that did not play out. Thankfully, thanks to Craig Because they have not read. They have not read the future that we kind of laugh at them. So, not really. Not so much anymore. Back there was a period of time though where they were laughed at pretty heavily. And now they're just kind of rare. What, the actually. SRT4? Yeah, I don't see it. I ton. see them all the time. Well, of course you do. You live right next to where they were all built. That is true. Fun fact, they were all built in the town I am from, good old Belvedere, Illinois. Yeah, I don't see a ton. I saw like one like 3 weeks ago, or so maybe. That was it. Well, the other thing is everyone's, you know, they're all junk now. Yeah, and the ones that aren't are too expensive. I would still love to own one one day. And I tell the story all the time. Me and Mike talk about it. Once upon a time, a few years ago, I had a dream that me and Mike had this beater SRT4, and we were literally, like, jumping it off of things. Like it was an off-road car. Yeah, that would like, be fun. We would take it on country roads and like 
jump it off railroad tracks and shit. Dude, we could. Okay. We could totally do that still. Or, yeah, and just build a go kart. Or both. We could build a turbo go kart. SRT4 swapped go kart. I mean, yeah. Could. I mean, at that point, just let's just buy the SRT4 and take all the everything off of it. Or kind of cool, like <laughs> figure out a way to make it rear wheel drive. Like take the take the front end out and use it as the rear end of a go kart, and figure out how to like <laughs> s- turn the shifter around or something. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's the drive type. Yeah, the, that would be the, weird. That would require the way the engine some is fab mounted. work for sure. It would need to be fabbed. A good fab. Oh, jeez. What's the neon in Forza? Does it seem like Forza 5 at 6? Is it even in 7? Um, I think it is. The ACR. Yeah, it's all always the ACR. Always the ACR. But... Until we get into the next chapter, that's really all Dodge had for muscle back then. Pretty much. And we know uh, how much that changed in the following years, the following decade. Oh, yes. I would say they definitely made up for lost time. Yeah. They made up for, you know, going from, like, the performance leader to nothing for, like, 30 years to... to, uh, Because... You know. 2005 and 2006 would end up being a couple big years for the the muscle cars. Yeah. Also 09. I think yes. it was that one. I'm almost wondering if we're going to have to split up 05 to the present into two different episodes. Probably. Or we can just send it and do another like three hour no. long one. You're right. We should just send it because I feel like there's no real cutoff point for that one. There is not really. I mean, no, there's not. If there's there, the only one I could think of is like between the three valve and the four valve, but then we would only talk about the three valve because that was like the only thing out. Besides, like the five seven dodges, which eh, yeah, let's just put them all together. So when you. When we leave off this chapter, 2004, here's what we got going on. We've got the Lightning, the Terminator Cobra, CTSV, GTO. WS6? No. Uh, those would have been discontinued by then. Oh yeah, the last dead. year for those in the Camaro were 02. Oh, so we're just talking 04 only. Yeah. Yes, where, we, where we're leaving off. SRT4 was still being made. Uh... What was Chevy still making at this point? They had the HHR still, or the the SSR still, I think. And the Corvette, obviously, but we're not really talking about the Corvette. Yeah, um... Man, I guess Chevy was in kind of a low spot at this point. Yeah, the only thing that's been out consistently has been the Mustang forever. And the Corvette. Besides 83... Yep. But, yeah, leaving off in a pretty strong place, I would say, overall. We can only go up from here and faster. And faster. See, that's the other thing. For as awful as those 90s and early 2000s autos were, the transmission technology was starting to get better. Yeah. um, On both sides, I mean, really... Those four speeds were like reliable, but they were still four speeds, which was kind of the problem. It was just right. the number of gears. They weren't like bad transmissions themselves, most of them. They were getting there, but I don't think they'd really figured out how to make a transmission that like was super performance e and could be a gas saver when you wanted it to. I mean, that technology wouldn't come along for quite a few more years. Not until really recently with, like, the 8-speed and the 10-speed and stuff like that. Right. 
Yeah, w as soon as we started climbing over six speeds is when the autos kind of um, became much more dominant instead of just very dominant. <laughs> yes, but yeah, I like my TR6060 and you like your whatever you have. I don't know. Whatever in the world transmission it is. A Subaru Hyundai Nissan collaboration. Let's see. What transmission does it have? It's always Let fun looking research. that up. Because Google's Something always six gonna speed. Say, yeah, Google's gonna be six speed manual. And then sit there and look at you like you're the asshole. <laughs> um let's see. Focus S T transmission. It literally says six speed manual. <laughs> yeah. You gotta look up the name. Maybe a Borg Warner. MMT six. Mm, okay. What? Who? Ford MMT six. It is a Ford Trans. That's what I'm seeing. A fard. Well, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yep. Six speed MMT6 B6 manual. Wow. What else would that be in? Everything in Europe and Asia, because they still drive stick there, but nothing here. <laughs> Maybe that's the same one that's in the uh, Branco Sport. And the whatever else is stick. Anything? I don't know, actually. I think it's the same one that's in the RS. So I don't know if it's the same one in the Bronco or not. Really? Is it it's the same one in the RS? I think. Seems like it. Based on what I saw, it is. Well, damn. Well, damn. So, yeah. That's where we will leave off the uh, the 93 to 04 chapter. Yeah, pretty solid time. It was the rebuilding phase. The 80s was the rebirth. The 90s was the rebuilding. And then we're going to jump into modern era. And then horsepower numbers are going to more than triple in a matter of three decades which is pretty cool but we will get to that next time we might have to even just skip the whole intro next time and just get right into it no kidding that's gonna be a long episode yeah we're gonna have to plan that one out maybe do that one in person you know maybe we'll see what's going yeah, on yeah i mean yeah yeah i think so yeah th how far are you away from uh great lakes actually uh, how far am I from Great Lakes? I want to say about an hour and a half-ish. Damn, everyone's an hour and a half from the track. I know. So I'll just come back to your place so we can record it, but that's like a complete triangle for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could, I mean, we could do a few episodes in between and then just do that one in person. We could. Oh, yeah, we could save that one. Because that's going to be a big, beefy one. Beefy. There's so much heat uh, to talk about. All right. I think we should do a top five for this era. Okay, Terminator Cobra. <laughs> yep, I would say that is 100% my number one. Mr. Chrome, of course. Yeah, Mr. Chrome, hard to up, termy. Like I said before, it's definitely a bucket list car for me. Yeah, I think also for me. Um, we'll see. We'll see where finances lead. We all can have one <laughs> of those too, and the GT500. Of course, if we make it big with this or like a YouTube career or something, I mean, you know. You yeah, now. If you guys want to. You know, sauce a little bit from your pockets into the old Terminator <laughs> fund here. 
Um, okay. We're both agreeants. Uh, number two, in no particular order, actually, but this is my second one. Eh, you probably do like an SLP Camaro. I, I think a face lifted. Similar vein for me. I'd go a WS6, though. Yeah, I'm in the middle. I always go back and forth with the looks because those WS6 have a lot going on, like everywhere. They do, which some people don't like. I love it. I I have always thought the WS6 looks a little bit better than the Camaro. I do like, I don't even know what you call it, like the honeycomb taillights. Yeah, those things. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. I do like those. Um, okay, uh, I don't know. I guess I put my next two together. Oh, wait, what is yours? What's your next one, actually? WS6. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, let's say torn between like the lightning and the SRT 10 Manuel SRT 10. So I guess the crew cab, I think that'd be fun. A fast truck with a giant engine or a supercharged engine. I think I'd have to go a 96 Impala SS for my next one. Oh, I just yeah. love those B bodies. I can't forget about the boats. That's right. You gotta have something that you can daily. You gotta. And for that, I'm going to say Marauder. Oh, Marauder. yes, the Marauder. Yeah, I would do the Marauder Cobra engine. And uh, they just look evil. The dark, the dual exhaust. So good. The wheels. Oh, yeah, the wheels. I love the stock wheels on those Marauders. Yeah, stock wheels look good. A lot of people put Mustang wheels on them, which also look pretty good. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, I I like the stock Termi wheels too. Yeah, they're just simple and they I don't know they just work with the car for some reason. Yeah, a lot better than the uh, those weird ones people put on the billion spokes. Or whatever. I, why does everyone do that with Terminators? I don't know. I don't think it looks that good. I don't either, but it's like so common. I don't get it. People are weird. People do the clear Alteza taillights for a while. That's also weird. Right. So that was your your third pick is the Marauder? Or no. Yeah. I don't is know. Is your fourth pick the Marauder? Your fourth could, pick is the Marauder. Yeah, it could be either. If you can put, yeah. Let's do, let's do fourth. Yeah, Marauder. All right. My fourth, it's... I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to do a first-gen Lightning swapped with a second-gen drivetrain. You know, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I, li- I like the bodies of the first one. All right, that's fair. That's good. I wonder, I wonder if you can put, like, a T56 behind it. Oh, I'm sure you could. Yeah, it's a, it's a Windsor, probably. I mean, they make adapter plates for all that stuff. Yeah. All right. Good call. Good call. All uh, right. For me, um, man, I don't know. Kind of, I would kind of want to say like a 2000 Cobra R to make a track car, a cornering car. Oh, that, that would be sick. The Terminator for the drag, and then the uh, Cobra R for the street circuit and all that road course car. That would be nice. Yeah, I think that's it for me. You know, my last one, it's it's a weird toss-up between a first-gen CTSV and an 04 oh. SRT4. Ooh, the CTSV also. Because SRT4 like SRT4 also it could be a daily, that's a thing. Yeah, I just, and I can't. I know they're junk and like, you know, they all they're all beat to shit by now, but I just can't let go of wanting one for some reason. It's like the they're primal just... urge. It's like my dad yeah. with the Chevelle, that's why he got one. See Sam, you're gonna spend like twenty grand on an SRT four when you're fifty. And Sam's no. gonna be livid. No, 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 no. I wouldn't spend ten grand on an SRT four. Yeah, no, not ten. Five. Um, I I mean, you know, 
what you're really gonna pick an srt4 over a ctsv come on i would i would go first gen ctsv there's just something about those that i like they're like the it's like the first gen lightning compared to the supercharged ones the first gen ctsv is like just overlooked and like overshadowed right i mean you know it's understandable why it's overshadowed there's a huge performance difference between that and the second gens and yeah, like quality horsepower. difference like the interior is so much nicer on the newer ones oh yeah i mean, I mean the first gen was that horrible gm was still getting out of their 90s plastic garbage phase i mean i i would even go so far as to say that like literally everything is better on the second gen ctsv but i don't know i just i like those first gens they're the cheap forgotten ctsv yeah they are and i see a decent amount of those actually i think i might even see more first gens than new ones well they're a lot more affordable yeah which i'm sure helps does help but i wonder how many are produced were produced and actually i was going to mention when we were when we were talking about our new edges there's one more new edge besides like i mean obviously the cobra r and then the terminator and the mach 1 there's one more that i honestly wouldn't mind having and that's the bullet right yeah however it's probably the best there... two valve yeah is there anything performance wise that's different about the bullets I honestly don't think so. It might have like a different intake to bump up horsepower by 10 at most. <laughs> but I don't think so. I just like that Highland Green. I think the new edges look good with that. Anything looks good in Highland Green, let's be honest. It really does. Yeah. Um, yeah, all, of, all, of, all the bullet generations, the uh, early ones, the S197s, and then the Man, um, each the S550. Each generation since the new edge has had a bullet. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Not every facelift, but every gen. Yeah. That's I mean that's a good point. I, I'm trying to think. I wonder if like a thirteen fourteen style with the Highland Green would look as good. I almost think it fits the O five to O nine more. It definitely does, because that's it, like the throwback to the sixties Mustang. Right, but then it looks really good on the new one, so I don't know. It sure does. Also, I think the new Mach 1 looks pretty cool, but that's a different thing. The new Mach 1? Yeah, Mach 1 just came out again. It did? Yep, 480 horsepower. It pretty much replaces the bullet. That's all it's doing. When did this happen? A while ago. There's no shaker or anything. It has like a cool... Well, I'm uh, behind. Hold on, I'm going to Google this real quick. I had no idea, or maybe I did and I just forgot about it. It has like a cool grill that has like fake fog lights. I wish they put the real fog lights in it because it would look good with round fog lights. I don't know why they... Like everyone always does the RTR style LED fog light ring things. And like, I don't know, put the round fog lights. Yes, you know. Eh? When was this released or like unveiled? I think I'm pretty a while ago now. I don't remember if it was wow. last year. But yeah, I do not remember ever hearing about this. Man, you're gonna see one on the street and think it's fake. That does look pretty good. I like the wheels. Yeah, I like the color, the cream color, and then it has like the orange and black accents and stuff. Looks pretty close to the Shelby with that spoiler it's not quite as aggressive as the shelby spoiler but oh yeah. and i like the badges how they're like the old school mach 1 badges yes the badges are really cool the font and like the with the, yeah yeah the new mach 1 480 horsepower or so people say it's replacing the 350 it's not it's replacing the bullet the 350 does not have a successor it Today I learned that there is a new Mach Fun. Yeah, Mach Fun. And all the boomers cool. are gonna be like, "This is what Ford should have done instead of that damn Mach E." Yeah, 
A lot of them are complaining that it doesn't have a shaker, which is funny. But it's only because it was standard on the 0304. The original Mach 1, the shaker was not standard. I was going to say. So, yeah, people are just complaining because they do not know, as is generally the case. Right. But, yeah, that was well. the late 90s into the early 2000s of Mosul. And then next time we talk, touch on this subject, which will probably be the future sometime, will be uh, the modern era, starting with the S197 Mustang, uh, because that was the only one around when it came out. And the then, only one around. The only one in at least in 05 for muscle cars yeah because the charger was the next year you had the ls2 gto oh yeah that's right neon was still being made well okay i have muscle there was the gto ctsv i think yeah i guess you could consider that it's fair. Let's 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 find out, shall we? What else was there in two thousand and five? The Lincoln Blackwood. The GTO. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Yeah, and then the Charger was next year, and then the boat in twenty ten. The Cam- the Camaro in two thousand nine. The the uh. 300 SRT8 was 05. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I can't believe that car, the same car, has been for sale for like 15 years. <laughs> All they did was change the body. It's probably the same car. The GXPs, the front wheel drive V8s. Yeah, how oh, about the, the Trailblazer of SS? Yeah, the Blazer or no, I guess that was 06. All right, well, we'll get to there. We'll get yeah, to we'll all get that there. fun we'll, we'll stuff. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there, little man. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be a behemoth episode, and uh, we're probably going to have to have a few cold ones for that. Oh, yes. That's always a good idea. I'm down for that. No intro. Plastered right into it. <laughs> hey, guys. So today we're going to talk about <laughs> best era... Of cars. <laughs> our era of muscle. The final. Rar era of <laughs> rars. Rar <laughs> of muscle. Yeah, so that'll be fun. That'll be a good one, and it probably will not be the next one. Um, but it will be one eventually. So, uh, anyway, in the meantime, thanks everyone for listening. Hope you enjoyed a lot. Lot 7 of the C2 episode podcast. Man, I almost <laughs> did. I almost did without realizing. You guys get the gist. I don't have to say it again. All right. Well, I have been Mike. And I have been Alex. And thank you all for listening. We'll catch you for the next one.